Okay, I know there are a lot of good, wonderful videos out there about kids, especially homeschool kids with ADHD, but today I wanna to talk to you about ADHD through the middle school and high school years from this homeschool mama's point of view. Hi, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Rachel. I am a homeschool mom of four boys, ages 11 to 20. I have graduated two, and today I'm gonna to talk about ADHD. This is not the easiest subject for me. I will probably not get real personal, but I do feel confident that my son, along with some other sensory disorders, including dysgraphia, has ADHD. He was never diagnosed, I will tell you that up front, and he is 18 now. So, not tell you with confidence that I wish I had him tested, or I'm glad I didn't, but I will let you know that I am at peace with where he is at. So, that is what I can say, but I would just want to share a little bit about some things that I have learned and some experience, and I may also share some curriculum that we used in the higher up levels. Okay, I know that each child with ADHD is going to be different. My son at the age of six was actually diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, which is also called juvenile diabetes, and then a few months later was diagnosed with celiac, both autoimmune disorders. So a lot of what was going on, I was putting the blame on those. But after some time and realizing everything was settled and good, I was like, I couldn't blame it on that anymore. So I did a little bit more further research and came to ADHD. Was not, I have heard the term, but never looked it up, really didn't know a lot about it, but I could check off all the boxes and really it made sense. So I also, after some time, figured out that he had dysgraphia. Now he may have had some other things like dyscalculia and I can't really say he had dyslexia. He was a late reader. None of that was tested. So. But I am pretty confident in the dysgraphia, which is the struggle with writing. I have a video about that, and I also have a video about some natural ways that we used for my son to help naturally with his ADHD from the Fine Gold Diet. I will also link that below. Let me tell you, he did come to me last year, the end of his senior year, maybe during this summer before he started working on an associate's. But he came in, peeked his head in my room and said, hey mom, guess what? I have ADHD. I did not mention that we really never talked to him about it. We did a lot of research. My husband and I did a lot of praying and that is really how we made it through. Just seeking guidance from the Lord, doing some research, um, listening to other moms and what they did to help their children. I feel like the diet really helped, but when you hit <laughs> those middle school years, the emotions escalate. And, you know, I really encourage you from the beginning to be praying for your children because you just don't know what they will have to go through and what the Lord will help you through to help them. And you are gonna need his help. There are, like I said, other moms you can listen to, lots of books you can read, but every situation is different. Um, whether it be a medical need, whether it be, you know, like ADHD or something like that, they're all different. And you're gonna need wisdom and guidance from the Lord. You're gonna need to pray for your child because your child is different than anybody else's. And he needs you to be praying for him, being in the word of God, just, um, and being ready for any situation that might come up to really just be ready to answer questions, whether to face a situation using scripture and 
that was the most helpful is just having scripture available, having good godly music available through those emotional times. Children with ADHD can be a lot of fun too. They like to have fun. They like to experiment and try new things. And they do have a lot of interests. But let me tell you a couple things I've learned is that they get very hyper focused on that one thing. And you're sort of at the point where you're like, we need to move on, but they are so focused on it and they have got to get more information and they've got to learn more. So when you're homeschooling a child with ADHD into middle school and especially high school, you can definitely find ways to get electives. So that was not a problem through high school. With the hyper focus, I will tell you there are times where they are in their room working on something, whether it be math or writing. I feel like math and when he did Latin, he disappeared. And I would always be thinking, he's not getting it done. And then he would come out with it done. And I was just so thankful. So let me know if you've been there. But there are times where they have wandered into something else <laughs> and it didn't even get looked at. So if they are not hyper-focused on it, they, their mind is wandering all kinds of different things and they're really just having a hard time bringing it all together, focusing on one thing. So that can make it difficult when you're in high school trying to set a schedule. I know we talk about lists and that is very helpful having a list of what they need to do. Um, a lot of times having it, we did it for a while on a whiteboard in his room and that seemed to help, but it sort of had to be big. <laughs> but also having those interests help because a lot of times I could be like, well, I will give you that time to, because he was interested in photography and videography, I will give you those times to work on those as long as you get this done and this done. So that did help. Another thing that I sort of learned um, over the years is that when we are working on something, and this probably I should have caught on very early on because he was a late reader, but I think what really got him interested in reading is I would read to them and he loved me to read and he loved a good story, but he was always like, keep going, mom, keep going, mom. Um, I think they are so focused that they want to know. So once he learned to read, it was hard to get him away from a book he had started. And he could also do it at his own speed. So I didn't really understand all that until he came into upper grades and I will tell you for curriculum, as he was entering middle school into high school is when I sort of discovered Heart of Dakota, he was actually in fourth. And in fifth grade, I didn't even use it for him because he was just starting to read. So I just handed him books for history and he did a co-op for science. Now, for his sixth grade year, I went ahead and started Creation to Christ. And that is what I'm using for my fifth grader this school year. And he did well. He actually did that. And then he did Resurrection to Reformation. But I will tell you, it was really helpful because I had already gone through it with my older son. So I had read most of the books. So that was helpful, at least for Resurrection to Reformation. Um, I had. So that was helpful that I didn't have to think about what he was reading. I already felt comfortable about it because he really needed to go at his own pace. He didn't want to have to know that he was waiting for me. He needed a curriculum that he could just get done on his own. And I think that's sort of why we split up. I have a few videos on how we didn't continue to be combined because when my boys were little, we did a lot of combining, but that started splitting. One of the reasons were because of my oldest, but also because of him. He was just at a different level. Um, his way of learning and needing to do things was totally different. So I know that was what I was supposed to do. 
So my oldest was up in a higher level of HOD working on something else. But when he went into eighth grade, he actually took a Tennessee history class at a co-op and it was actually a not grasp book. I'm saying that because I was trying to not question myself about that, but it was not grass. But the teacher was really, really good. And pretty much reading and just a little bit of writing, it wasn't a lot. So that was good for him because writing was very difficult. And not the process of writing, like just the actual physical process of writing. Like he was full of a lot of information and a lot of words. It was just actually having to physically write it on paper. That is a little bit about dysgraphia. And I talk about that in my struggling learners video. And that went well. So we didn't do missions to Marvel, but I did give him the books to read because he did like to read. He loved books. Because of that, I'm gonna stay on the history science and then I'll go back to writing and um, English and math for what we did in the higher up levels. Because of that so much reading, let me go into ninth real quick and say that he did do Heart of Dakota World Geography and that was good because that was a lot of that was new to him and that went well we did the logic with that and I have videos on that also if you're not familiar with this curriculum Heart of Dakota that I am talking about it is a Charlotte Mason based Christian worldview curriculum and it is a box curriculum but we really mainly use it for the history and sometimes we will pull in some other things like their science and that year we use their logic for high school they have like it fully written out for you to get all your credits it's great if you want to use it to the full extent but we just used it for the history and the logic that year 10th grade year he had to do American history so we pulled this book there's two of them this is the second one. I don't have the first one anymore and there is student books that go with it that have questions and answers and I think there's a president study in that and that was something he could walk away and do on his own. Now I will tell you and I'm assuming it's because of the ADHD but he had done so much reading and so much research that he knew a lot and they sort of have that mindset of like I already know that. Why do I have to do it again? But because you're in high school and you're supposed to have the credit um, and I feel like every book is different, so you will learn new information, but that's sort of where you bump heads a little bit, is they need to figure that out on their own. So he did this the best he read and answered, did some of the worksheets. So I'm just letting you know, that's sort of how their mindset is. So this is what he used. I tried to pick something that was just reading basic answer questions for him, nothing too intent. So that is what we used for that history. And then for economics, we used um, this from Compass Classroom. It comes with videos, which was very nice. So he pretty much just had to watch the video and there, there's some questions in this book. And the book is mainly exactly what is on this video. So that is what he did for economics. For government, he actually did Whatever Happened to Justice, which my son is using as part of Heart of Dakota's curriculum this year. And he actually, I don't have it in front of me, but there's a workbook that has questions and answers. It's the blue stocking book, I think is what, what it's called. So he did that with this. And we also had the opportunity to take like a constitutional class locally. And we counted that into the government. So that is actually what he did for government. This was simple read questions and then the class. So that is what we did for government. And then let me just show you this because I have this available. Oh, here is the blue stocking guide. So it's just the questions and the answers are at the back. Yes, the answers are in the back. <laughs> I was looking real quick. So for personal finance, which is another requirement for us, he just did the Dave Ramsey videos with the book and followed along with that. So that was all history. Now I mentioned for science, he took a co-op class like in sixth I think it started in fifth grade, which is a little bit before middle school, but it was apology of animals in fifth. It was the physics and chemistry one in sixth, with he, which he really enjoyed. He enjoyed both of those classes. But I will tell you, I tried to do the apology anatomy at home. I was trying to combine him with his brother and it didn't go real well. <laughs> We tried and I almost feel like he would have benefited so much more if I sort of understood that if I just gave him the book, 
for him to read, maybe do some of the work pages, that he would have benefited so much more from that. Now, seventh and eighth, I'm trying to remember what he did in seventh, and I cannot remember exactly. That may have been when we tried to do something at home. Eighth grade, he probably did some of the tenor books, which I have mentioned. We have used those anywhere from middle school into high school for those. Master Books has lots of those. There is one on chemistry, there's one on biology, all different subjects for science. So, but in ninth grade, we decided to try the physical science from Apologia, and that went okay. He read it, um, he did some of the questions and tests, but we just got through it. <laughs> I'll put it that way, we just got through it. Um, I do feel like he was wearing down by the time he entered high school with all the information. I do feel like co-op classes helped him some or outsourced classes because in 10th grade he actually did the apology of biology at a co-op and it was not the easiest class. It's probably not his favorite, but it went well. Like he learned a lot. Um, he had to be taking tests for the co-op. I think it was a really good experience to prepare him for other things that were coming. So he also took a writing class and let me finish up with the science and I'll talk about that in just a minute. But for his 11th grade year, we did the physics 101 and he breezed through this pretty quickly. He mainly did the videos and the workbook and I was like, you got to keep working. And we did the applied science from master books. And he actually just did this book because this was took him over half the year to do. I just felt like he needed more than just this that school year. So he did this part of it and that is what he worked on for science. For the English grammar, and I'm gonna tell you, I cannot remember everything for that because I am not one to use the same thing every year. I do know that we used a lot of IEW because I sort of discovered that when my oldest was in fifth and sixth. I know he would have done the medieval themed book from IEW in sixth grade when he did, no, that would have been seventh grade when he did Resurrection to Reformation. He did a literature type class, which had a lot of writing in it in at a co-op in eighth grade. In ninth grade, he probably did one of the IEW videos. It was probably B. And then 10th grade, he actually took a writing class. They used um, the Elegant Essay writing lessons and she did some extra things too. This was really good for him. Um, he learned a lot and like I said, it was good because it was in a co-op setting he did a lot of communication with not just the teacher, but the class itself was on a certain site for the co-op where they would get their assignments and other questions or special small assignments that they could turn in. So um, this was actually a really good year for him. And then his 10th and 11th grade year, I think is how it worked and I'm not sure. He used analytical grammar. And I will link a little video of what that looks like right here because I just seen it at a used bookstore and I thought, I forgot he used that. What I liked about that is it had a sheet for each concept they learned and they could keep that separate in a notebook so like they could refer to everything. And I thought that would help him. And I feel like it did. Like I feel like it went okay, he just, did not like the diagramming. And I really have not been one of the homeschool parents that have pushed diagramming. And I feel like that is okay. So my boys have done fine with grammar. He finished up that book in 11th grade. And I'm trying to remember what else. We probably finished up some IEW in 11th grade. And then in 12th, he actually did a dual credit for English. So sharing all that with you. And then I did talk about science, math. For math, we've always done IEW, but in ninth grade, I sort of got nervous and thought, I really need him to focus. And I knew that he needed something independent. He doesn't really like to be told exactly what to do. Um, he just wants the work given to him and be able to walk away and do it. So let me know if you have one that is like that. Now it wasn't, I don't think, when I look back, I think, I don't, 
I think it's just a maturity thing that they have to work through, especially with that type of personality, because I feel like now, I, I just feel like it's grown. The maturity there has grown. So, um, but it does, and I will stop right here and just take, tell you it it's uh for us as the homeschool mamas it's a missions of the impatient and just seeking the lord and in each situation of how to handle it because you want to keep peace in the house and you want to help them through that you want them to learn I truly believe that he had a desire to learn he wanted information he just needed it in a certain way so he knew he had to stay focused and what was going to work for him back to math sorry for that little runoff there but we tried teaching textbooks algebra one in ninth grade I heard great reviews about it i thought this is going to be great he's going to do this independently and i think it started out okay but it really um did not turn out good for us. It was hard when there was concepts he did not understand. Math was not a subject he did well with. In general, um, he didn't like when numbers and letters decided to get together. <laughs> so he finished about 60 to 70% of it and I talked to the umbrella that we have to be under with our state and they suggested maybe just counting it as pre-algebra which was fine because the next school year we went to Saxon and we used the Art Read DVDs and we did Algebra 1. He made it through it. I don't know if it was just he was ready for it more so or um, Art Read more, more does the problems on the board and then they have to do the work you know, on their own in the book. So maybe it was just the way he needed to do it was different. So Geometry, we went ahead and did Matthew C. And then I will let you know, in 12th grade, we actually did Mr. D's Consumer Math, and he really enjoyed that. He said he almost wished he would have taken it a year earlier. Of course, they say that, but then they're in the midst of all their other interests that would he have, I don't know. But he enjoyed it a lot, he learned a lot, and I don't know much else about their other programs. He did say there was a little algebra in there and that almost helped him a little bit more understand algebra. So just sharing that with you because um, there's so many different curriculums out there. And that is why I'm sharing this video. I just want to let you know what we did and what worked. So let's talk about his electives. You know, with a child with ADHD, they are gonna have a lot of interests. And if you could narrow that down and bring it into an elective, it works out great. I really had no problems of finding electives. And I also, it helped a lot of it, like he did photography, um, I counted advanced photography, and that, I may have put that under art, I cannot remember. He did videography, he did a lot of video editing, he actually started a YouTube channel, which I mean, he had to speak and present. He actually did some presenting on information about cameras and teaching about lighting. So all that could be entered into speech, really, if you wanted it to. So just thinking outside the box of what they're interested in and how you can apply it. He also had a job, which you can count, work as an elective, um, he did, work enough to save up enough for his own vehicle by the time he graduated. So letting them step out, like he knew he had to get the schoolwork done. Helping him find those focus times because if they are not focused, they're not gonna get anything out of it. I'm gonna let you know that. They might fill in something or write something for you to please you, but it doesn't mean they got something out of it. So really finding time where they can focus. And I feel like those times he went in his room and closed the door, he was focused on it and came out um, and gave me the work. Now, I did not mention he did take one year of language and that was Latin. And it was the one from Compass Classroom. I do not have that. I will link a little picture here. And that went really well. I almost wish my 10th grader this past school year that I really would have just pushed that, but he wanted to do French. So 
but that went well for him. He did okay with that. So I hope this was a little bit helpful in giving you some suggestions and thoughts and ideas. And I just want to encourage you that, you know, sometimes you feel like nobody understands. And I'm going to be honest with you, they may not. And let that draw you closer to the Lord. Let that help you know that He's given you this special person or this special opportunity, and it will help you grow closer to Him. It will, and if you allow that, it will help your child see that too. So it takes a lot of time, and I'm not going to tell you that it was easy. <laughs> there are days where it is hard and especially with a house full of boys there's a lot of commotion going on and with someone with ADHD that needs to focus that needs everybody and everything out that made it a little bit hard too so but he is doing well and still praying him through this time in his life because really 18 19 and 20 can be a hard time too so all right I hope this was helpful in some way and I appreciate you all watching and I really hope you'll have a wonderful week and we will talk to you again soon.